Ladies and gentlemen, friends of Prague, I first approached the world of the Prague Quadrennial in the early month of 2011. I visited PQ11 and then curated the first participation of Lebanon in 2015. It has been a vibrant journey and I would like to pay tribute to its organizers, those who make it happen, those who are in touch with the various participating countries, regions and entities. Because despite a small team and loads of drawbacks, they manage to secure a permanent follow-up and communicate clear guidelines. So, thank you. Very much. At the end of PQ 2015, the organizers called for an auction sale that was mainly addressed to those who wanted to dispose of their materials and cut on the fees of shipping back the exhibition. However, the auction ignites a reflection on the longevity of the exhibition. Sure, the exhibit is conceived and executed to serve in the PQ, but is the PQ limited to the 10-day event in Prague? Organizers and curators spend dozens of months working on new editions. The PQ is then the culmination of a four-year work in progress and not only a social event. The PQ exhibition is therefore bound for existence beyond its traditional 10 days. Of course, in a different form. Locking the exhibit in a basement or demolishing it, like a scenic set on closing night, muffles the PQ bubble. Here, we are invited to capitalize on the main PQ exhibitions that are a valuable asset of visibility for us to use and benefit from. Planning a touring exhibition, for example, is a perfect means to extend the lifetime of the PQ exhibition and its geographic outreach. It serves as a mobile PQ advertisement and as a marketing incentive that draws awareness and actively contributes to the PQ growth and its public expansion. It also brings closer the various editions of the PQ and actively, and actively positions the Quadrennial as an open platform for work in progress. Eventually, the available finances, partners and venues will be tailoring the magnitude and size of the touring exhibition. In this frame, the PQ has everything to gain through by defining a proper marketing positioning. First, how do we use PQ name variants? I mean, when do we use Prague Quadrennial and when does it become Prague Quadrennial of performance design and space? In the case of the social media outlets, do we type PQ 2015 or PQ 15 or PQ apostrophe 15? Sure, these acronyms do revert to the same event. However, the use of the multiple identities backfires on the online strategy and affects the general tracking of the event. The consistency of the description of the PQ is also a point to highlight. Is the PQ a festival or not? The website states that the PQ is not a festival. However, the press release of July 8, 2015 describes the PQ as a festival. Moreover, and with the EFFE 2015 award of last September, the PQ is now established in the festival circuit. In this dimension, how does the PQ position itself in the spectrum of festivals and festival practices. Since its inception in 1967, the Prague Quadrennial has been reinventing itself to be aligned with its mission, which is presenting every four years the latest trends in theatre design. But what are we exactly presenting? Is the genre of the exhibition a potpourri of the best scenography works in the place of origins? Is it a thematic display of scenography works? Is it a commissioned work for the PQ? Is it an installation, a display of a, of a theater model building from, from somewhere? Is it a performance space or a selection of multiple works or just one work? In parallel, what are we inviting visitors to focus on? Is the highlight of the exhibition on the exhibited theater works themselves that these works that were staged in the country of origins and then presented in the PQ, or is the highlight on the exhibition general display, which means the shell that comprises the whole exhibited theatre works. And still in the same direction. How do curators think their exhibition for the PQ? How does an exhibited work in the PQ differ from another work that is exhibited in the Biennale of Venice or in the Sao Paulo Biennale exhibition? Do we tackle a performance design exhibition the same way we address a fine art exhibition? What defines 
the borderline between a fine art exhibition and an exhibition for scenic or performance design. Is an exhibition of performance design supposed to be performative? And then what makes an exhibition performative? Is it performative because it is defi it's a defined route that the visitor explores and moves with, maybe when he tilts his head or walks from point A to point B? Is it performative because it's kinetic, like, uh, like, like a carousel that uh, rotates? Melting ice planks sandwiched between books do carry a dimension of motion, the motion of the dripping water. In this sense, a video is also motion. But is it performative? And in the other case, does the exhibition become less suitable when the visitor walks with his arms crossed and no visible physical interaction? Defining this does not really clash with the PQ multidisciplinary approach. It rather advocates a sharp presence that would have a greater impact on the PQ and contribute to its general narrative. The overall PQ visit itinerary often does not tell a story, as most exhibitions are independent platforms with no specific alignment. For this, one would directly blame the organizers for not setting up a storytelling route for the exhibition. However, very much often, curators do not submit their proposals in due time, and often the final display is not in accordance with the original presented models, plans, and pictures. Placing the PQ 2015 under the umbrella of shared space, music, weather, politics, granted a general theme and overall literature to the PQ. However, the themes were extremely large for interpretation and socially divergent. Therefore, a harmony was not really met in most exhibits that still seemed like aisles spread into the venues that were hosting the PQ. Because venues were paramount in the 13th edition, from a technical and practical point of view, the organizers took a great risk in spreading the PQ all over the old town, even though they should have capitalized on this spread to gain in visibility and therefore in great marketing exposure. The venues, despite their natural limitations and specifications, did offer a beautiful and thrilling cachet, a bespoke shell to host the exhibitions. However, and despite the multiple calls of the organizers to think the exhibitions in site specificity and uniqueness of the place, most exhibitions shut themselves away in boxes or in darkness and blocked the communication with the venue off. Most exhibitions could be placed anywhere else without, with no change in their layout, energy, and feel. Conceiving an exhibit to be specific to the venue where it lays is a challenge itself. Given the floor load, the, the access to the space, the routes and the regulations of the classified and protected places. However, both the layout and display of the exhibit itself are affected by the site specificity and therefore curators are invited to think the general layout of the exhibit as much as the exhibited works themselves. Securing funds and financial sustainability were the biggest challenge of PQ15. Curators are often heard of complaining about the lack of government and public support. As a matter of fact, when the PQ15 closed its call for applications end of January 2014, individuals were confirming the participation of their country or region with no official endorsement from their government or their ministries. By excluding the implication of the officials from the beginning, we find ourselves in non-responsiveness when we reach them out for funding. Public institutions usually ask for a generic presentation of the PQ that would answer questions, questions such as how many people attend the event, what is their age bracket, what is their background, what is their spending ratio, etc. Basic statistics, as well as the accreditation center, can secure these answers that would facilitate the attention of the sponsors in the PQ. As government and public funds operate, like corporations with planned budgets, and retro planning expense sheets, it is important they are approached 12 months before the upcoming PQ edition. The PQ traditionally takes place in June. Therefore, the active funding quest within the national delegations should start a year before. Which means 
By June of the year that precedes the PQ, curators should be able to submit a sponsorship proposal or a funding request that comprises final drawings and model pictures of the exhibitions as well as all other activities and full biographies of the members of the delegation. Within the limits of availability, organizers of the PQ are assisting the curators with their needs and they provide them free of charge with postcards and printed material for the PQ to come as well as merchandising, leaflets, and promotional prints for previous editions. For example, in the case of the next PQ in June 2000, uh, 2019, the curatorial work is advised to start around October 2017. Of course, here rises the issue of funds and salaries, especially that most organizers and curators fulfill other positions in theater productions and in academic sphere. In conclusion, curators represent the country or the region they come from. They conceive the exhibitions and plan the logistics of their participation. However, as the PQ also open, opens calls for individuals, organizers are invited to inform the curator or the national coordinator about the other accredited people who come from their same country. This is necessary as visitors tend to ask, uh, as visitors tend to, to ask exhibitors about performances by other people from their country and curators are often not aware of them. Also, putting the curators and the visitors and the performers in contact contributes to a more precise publication and could brightly affect the general logistics of the participation of the country. In a similar sense, actually, last June, the organizers issued a list of all the participants in the PQ with their occupation, date of presence in Prague, and contact details. It's a very interesting document that uh, comes in the service of networking and fosters con connections. PQ is a culmination of a continuous creative work and practice on scenography and performance design. It's a bustling and feisty, overwhelming program that should comprise a little bit of silent pauses and moments to reflect and think without the stress of missing out. And finally, PQ is also invited to take into consideration the mobility and access of physically challenged people, those who are on wheelchairs or using crutches, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, these were the reflections and notes I wanted to bring forward to your attention. Thank you very much.